The research I've been doing for the last 13 years has involved studying how um, automobiles are recycled when they, re each, when they reach the end of their useful life. This means we've been looking at how end-of-life vehicles or ELVs are managed and what parts are recovered for recycling and what parts and materials are not recovered for recycling. The benefits of this research to the Canadian automotive industry has been to help the Canadian automotive recyclers understand how the recycling of end-of-life vehicles impacts the environment. These impacts could be in the form of uh, resource conservation as well as the uh, avoidance of greenhouse gas emissions. The research is also uh, involved uh, understanding how we might be able to recover more of end-of-life vehicles for for reuse, remanufacturing, and for recycling. Over the span of the Auditorium project, what we've done is we've really managed to compile a database, a life cycle inventory of where things go in and out. There's a lot of emphasis these days on life cycle assessment. To, to get to that point of assessing the sustainability, the environment, economics, even the social impacts, you need to figure out where all the parts are coming and going. And so that's been the bulk of the Auto 121 project. Uh, we're coming towards the tail end, and what we're trying to finish up with is the next phase, which we will call corporate environmental reporting. This sort of voluntary reporting is actually uh, very prevalent now in a lot of other industries. And it helps in some ways raise the bar and bring an awareness to both within the industry and the side of industry of how things can be done. And uh, in cooperation with our industry partners, we're looking to see would something like corporate environmental reporting benefit the dismantling, the reuse and the recycling industry. Because of the dismantler's efforts, as much as 12% of end-of-life vehicles actually do get recovered for reuse, remanufacturing, and for recycling. Ultimately, this means economic gains to the recycler, as well as the creation of jobs. For every thousand metric tons of materials that are diverted from landfill means the creation of seven new jobs for people in the materials recycling industry. Standard Auto Records is a third generation business. What we do is we dismantle vehicles that have reached the end of their lives, either through natural causes and or via accidents. So our primary purpose is the recycling of vehicles and the sale of used auto parts. If recyclers didn't exist and they don't exist in certain places and we've seen it way up north in northern Canada, derelict vehicles sit around. The leach fluids, the oils, the antifreezes, you name it, doesn't get handled properly, which is the important part of an actual automotive recycler, different than a scrap metal operator whose primary purpose may be the scrap metal and the metal components and the commodity components, whereas an auto recycler's primary purpose is the parts. An inherent part of our process is taking care of the fluids, making sure that we handle the Freon, that we take out the mercury switches, the gases and the oils. And this is a big part of why you know I'm really proud to be an auto recycler. We need regulation and truly we need support. This is why we always open our arms up to the Auto 21 group, to the University of Windsor, to Susan and Edwin, and we know we have a lot to learn and we appreciate the research and development that's being done in our industry because we desperately need it. And so on the larger scheme, Auto 21 has been very beneficial because it's set up the sort of credibility to network. A lot of people, especially when you're talking about end of life operations, kind of leave it as once it's out of sight, it's out of mind, just like what I said earlier about recyclability. So Auto 21 has helped lend the credibility to continuing and furthering this research. And I hope what people realize out of this is that everything is interconnected and that it all comes back together.